Before we start with today's race, I want to let you guys know in advance, I made a very, 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 very big mistake. Um, we were going to be racing at Phoenix um, for the first chase race of the season, but accidentally, I made the first chase race Watkins Glen. Let me explain that. Um, you see, I opened up the wrong schedule um, up. This was Watkins Glen was supposed to be next season's opening chase race. It was supposed to be the season 10 chase race, and I'll explain more on that when we get to season 10 signups. So, but. Um, Watkins Glen was supposed to be next season's opening chase race, and I made it this season's opening chase race instead. I opened up the wrong schedule and was trying to find what track we have to go to for the first chase race of the season. I know it was supposed to be Phoenix, but accidentally I made it at Watkins Glen instead, and I apologize for that um, in advance. Um, we did the race entirely, and I did not want to have that race wiped out, all because I chose the wrong track to go in when we had chase race number one. I did not want to screw up the results from this race. I already did that race from the Glen and the ch first chase race. I made a big mistake there, and um, I apologize in advance. To make up for it, Phoenix will be added to next season's schedule. They will, uh, it was supposed to be Eldora on that weekend but it will now be held in Phoenix in that weekend instead. I apologize for those of you who are looking forward to seeing a race in Phoenix for Beaumont Cup. I usually don't have two races at one track in a single season. I like to change things up every race. But yeah, I made a massive mistake in my part, and I apologize for that, uh, for those looking forward to Phoenix. So the race is held instead at Watkins Glen because of my error, my bit of an error. Again, I already had done the entire race recording and all that and results and updated. I just did not want to dump that race because I made a mistake. So anyway, I apologize for that. I hope not to do it again in the next race. I will be very careful next time. I'll just use the current schedule instead of the future schedule because I actually already set up next season's schedule in advance and I opened that by accident and I thought that Walk Glen was going to be the next race. <laughs> yeah, I made a mistake like that. I apologize for that. We are going to be racing in Glen instead because because of all this. So I apologize. It's my bad. But we're going to have another great race at Watkins Glen. Back to the Pullman Cup. Back to the home track of TA2 Racing. Ironically, so it's back at the classic version as well. So there is no boot. Usual S curve instead. It's a long straightaway that you had used before. Like in the late 90s, they changed it. So anyway, we're going to be racing at Glen today. The Deonsi 300 will be held at Watkins Glen instead of Phoenix. I apologize for that, Jordan Davis. You don't have to correct the error. That was my error. I apologize. We weren't supposed to go to Glen, but um, we were supposed to go to Phoenix, but I made a mistake on the schedule, looking up the schedule, where the next race was. So anyway, I apologize in advance. Hope you enjoy the race anyway from Watkins Glen. It's time for the chase of Season 9 of the NASCAR Pokemon Cup Series. We're here live at Watkins Glen International for the running of the Diancy 300. Diancy 300, whatever, but either way, it is the first race of the chase and the first of three races in the Sweet 16. 16 drivers will try to avoid becoming the bottom four drivers to stay alive in the hunt. We'll be down to 12 after the third race of the chase. So everything is on the line in every race this season. The championship is on the line. So from here on out, it's the chasers that are going to compete for the championship. So here goes nothing. On the pole today, we have a chaser itself. Zachary, uh, no, Charles Sanford starting on the pole. We have the top five started with chasers. On the outside is another chaser, Zachary Fitzwater. In row two, it's Bob Ferguson, Jonathan Skivnicki. In row three, we have chaser Casey Clover and P.J. Williams, who just missed getting in the chase. Dylan Young and George Rourke, who also missed in the chase. Young is in the chase. Rourke just barely missed it. And running out the top ten is Connor Vale and former champion Nick Barney. Not competing in the chase, but just looking to win a race. Anyway, without further ado, let's hear those famous words in Motorsports. Drivers, start your engines!
and the cars are rolling off the track. 21 laps here at Watkins Glen. It's the second straight race in the Glen. We're using the classic configuration. In other words, there's no S-curve in the middle, so it is all fast speed from there, which means a lot of passing, a lot of things could happen. Here we go, the chase of NASCAR Beaumont Cup Season 9 is underway at the Glens Deonsi 300. Oh my gosh, Charles Sanford, what was he, was he sleeping on the start? Because he just did not get the good start he wanted. Nice. Right off the bat, first caution of the day, everyone's all mixed up. Right off the bat. And here it is, a long curve in place of that little boot there, it's the curve, which means passes like these happen a lot of often than they should be. Zachary Fitzwater hanging on to the hanging on to hanging on to the other driver for even John Skibnicki. No! Oh wow! Looked like John Skibnicki was gonna make a move, but Fitzwater stay with the lead under caution. Ooh, a bad wreck with Zeke Marley. Let's look back at a replay. Ooh, it was a bad wreck. This would have been the cause of the caution, as you see right here. Ooh, David Rochester right into Zeke Marley, and then hits Aaron Frank and takes out Jacob Cook. But what a move by Michael White and the others in the back right there. They just avoided that incident. But Connor Breton, wow, he got trouble casting the pace car there. Pace car came out a little early. A little too early. Like, I don't think he even rested on pit road when the caution flew. Mm, that was the, there was the moment the caution flew. Oh, I see. I see why they pulled out a caution. That was a big mess on the first turn alone. Right off the bat, we had a couple drivers have trouble on the first corner of the race. As you see, Jacob Lawler was trying to pass... Naziki Marley was trying to pass Jacob Lawler. And Marley clips the 60, then along with it clips the 7, 6, 22, and 4. Kyle Collins, a chaser, not a good start to his chase. Ooh, Luke Walker, contact with the six machine of Michael White and a lot of others just stuck piled up. Notable driver Kyle Collins not off to a great start in the chase. Ugly start in the chase this season. Mm. Let's hope this doesn't become a trend in the next two races so we can stay alive. And we have our first retiree of the race, Zeke Marley has called it wits. David Rochester is down a lap, but he's still on pit road. And it's still going to be Zachary Fitzwater, your leader. The top three are the chasers. Fitzwater, Skip Nicky, and Charles Sanford all looking to lock themselves into the next round. Remember, if a chaser wins a chase race, that chaser will advance to the next round, to whatever next round that is. Back to green here at Watkins Glen, and David Rochester has just retired. Oh boy, oh boy! Charles Sanford spun out while trying to make a move for the lead. Oh, so cool! Right into the 25! Oh, Charles Sanford has just disastrous day. He had a bad start in the front, and then it gets, and now it just ends it, just that, just right off the bat, with a rack. And look at this, John Skibnicki using the high, the, the long curve, the long straightaway, to take the lead. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of using the long straightaway instead of the S-curve. It makes for a lot more passes, and in turn, a lot more exciting racing. 
Oh boy, Fitzwater blocks Roar to avoid losing second, but John Skipnicki's going to take the lead away under caution. Oh man, what a dramatic sec fifth, fourth lap. Oh man, what a heartbreaker for Charles Sanford. He was almost in the position to possibly take, make a comeback and take a win away. Oh, but it just wasn't to be. As you see, here's the incident. You see the two of P.J. Williams made contact with the 25. And then moments later, Seth Cole's about to come right in and have a hard charge on him. I don't know what he was trying to do. He could have just went to the left side, but he went head on instead. And that was the exact cause of the caution. Wow, two drivers and hometown hero Seth Cole. By the way, this is his home track, and so is TA2 Racing's home track. I almost forgot to mention. But boy, a tough break. And here was the pass for the lead for John Skidnicki. He wanted to know how he did it. Got off the Esther, but he needed to use the straightaway to uh, make the pass. He used it to pull away. Charles Sanford is down a lap, so is Seth Cole, but if even if Sanford, well, Sanford will probably be the lowest finishing chaser of today's race. It was a tough road ahead because he was all the way up from, like, the pole to 39th, and he had a bad start in the front. He did not even get his car going, and that allowed Zachary Fitzwater to take the lead. I don't know if it's against the rules, but... Well, I just don't want to, like, add rules at the last minute to drop them over the rules. So, uh, uh, Cole and Sanford are done, so Sanford is the lowest finishing chaser today. John Skivnicki, the chaser, is still left to get the green flag to keep the lead. And the 32, 3, and 88. Trouble on that curve. That curve has been one of the toughest part of the course today. But we're still green. Huh. We're still green. Ooh, it looked like Charles Zachary Fitzwater was going to have a move on the 94. Oh, he might. Ooh, what a block by Skibnicki. But still no caution. Oh, no. I think the top two slipped. They did slip. Wow, the top two drivers slipped on the final corner. They didn't even pull out a caution. What happened? Oh, man. Wow, these guys slipped up. Here's the incident. You see the 94 skip Nicky and Fitzwater battling for the lead. And I think they were distracted by each other that they took the turn too hard and landed in the dirt. Wow, as if the twist keep just doesn't stop. I mean, man, this has been one of the most interesting Glen races we've ever had in a long time. Oh man, what a heartbreaker for John Skibnicki and Fitzwater, the two chasers the, in the top five. They've lost it again. Oh man, these chasers are not having the best of luck to start off the chase. And George Warp's the leader. The highest chaser right now is Bob Ferguson second. Bob Fergus, he had the points lead for most of the season. He lost it to Connor Breton, but then the Chase reset the points. Well, he only has one win, so if he gets a second win, he'll be in contention again. In advance of the Dirty Dozen. George Ward here trying, just simply trying to win. PJ Williams now is up to third. Williams also missed out on the Chase. Dylan Young, another chaser's fourth, and Casey Clover, the leader in the chase, is running in fifth. I 
Wow, we've been crossing three for two laps. I don't, I don't, I don't remember when the last time we had a long green flag run like that here at the Glen. Even at the old configuration, we didn't have a great long green flag run. And in the new one, it's a lot different. Couple damaged drivers taking pit stops since there's no caught. There was no caution there. Oh, oh, Daniel Coffey wall hitting his way to the position to the sixth position over Nick Barney. Wow, it looked like he hit a bit of the wall there, but Daniel Coffey was able to make a pass on the 43. Ooh, could be a battle for second between P.J. Williams and Bob Fergus. These guys are steaming mad after um, they were in the top 10 in points heading into the chase, but did not get a win, so they didn't get in the chase because of that. And now they want revenge. Mark and Williams are out for revenge. Three laps in a row, we had not had a caution. How clean, wow, pretty clean. We've had two today early, but, well, that's not the case. Oh, P.J. Williams and Dylan Young. The one and two spun in the first corner. Oh, Williams is going to lose it. Unbelievable. Oh, he hit the wall there. He slows up. Oh, my. Wow, P.J. Williams. He was just a little too aggressive on that first corner. And yes, that's going to pull out a caution. Finally, we get a caution after, like, what, three laps? <laughs> Very unusually long caution, but it had to end some point. George Ward continues to lead. No challenge from Bob Ferguson. And with that spin, Casey Clover is now up to third. Oh, he could lose it with Dan Coffey. No, though, he hangs on. Wow, Dan Coffey looked like he was going to challenge him, but was not to be. And you probably already saw the caution at that point. It was for them, P.J. Williams and Dylan Young, so we're not even going to look back at a replay. Let's see any updates. Frank has retired. Aaron Frank is done for the day. Jordan Davis, Zachary Fitzwater, John Skimnicki, they're down a lap. We have now pat we're now reached the halfway point here at the Glen. And you I've noticed something a little strange. These guys the, some of the the leaders have not pitted. Well, some of them in the back have, but the leaders have not have not pitted, so could this be part of their strategy or could this just be a chance to just make it on either one pit stop or maybe even none? We'll just have to see about that. But we'll have just we have just eight we have just nine to go. To decide who's gonna be able to make it out alive and don't worry this is a road course so the lap cars are not going to be on the bottom of the leaders okay these guys are pinning early before the green flag oh no Pillarstool holds up the aggressive field you'll have to pull a caution for that are you kidding me Nick Parasol's on his way down Pier Road. He slams the wall, forces a traffic jam, and they will, and they have to get back under caution after that incident. Wow! How could he miss it? How could he miss? Oh, he, he yeah, he thought about it the last minute. Wow! He made a last minute change and yeah, he went in at the wrong time. Really. He went in at the wrong time. And he holds up a couple drivers along with it. Oh my gosh. That's just incredible. I don't know if they would race it to the line, but I think they weren't racing it to the line. Oh my gosh. This has been a mess of a race mess of a start today. A messy, messy start. And Connor Breer, oh, Zach Goldback has just spun on the first corner, but they slowed up in time. Oh my gosh, what a weird start. Wow. Nick Parasol's 
on his way down pit road before the green was to wave hits the wall delays the field and has to put up another caution so now they're going to have to go through another two laps of caution just for everyone to get set wow this is just weird at its finest man it's so weird Parasols and DJ Curtis retired. Leia Walker is down two laps. I think Curtis and Walker got damage from Parasols, but oh my gosh, they hadn't needed another caution. That's incredible. But hey, a lot of incredible stuff has happened for one cup. This is just pretty much routine. But oh well, six to go back to green for Connor Breton. As he was the leader, he was supposed to be the leader to the green flag, so he kept the, keeps the lead. Zach Goldbeck runs second, John McNamara, the highest chaser in third. He's competing for second. PJ Williams returns to fourth, and Jeffrey Buckeye, another chaser, is fifth. Oh man, Goldbeck a little too high there. Oh, and a spin with John McNamara. Oh, and he takes out another chaser. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. These chasers are having a rough time here at the Glen as Connor Breton. Well, he's a chaser himself, though. Breton, he's looking to get a second win. And PJ Williams just dumped behind. He chews in it. Leia Walker as well. And Williams goes upside down. Oh man, this is turning into a demolition derby. Buckeye now second as we have the chasers in the top two. With just, I think there's going to be five laps to go. Oh, Connor Bell I just saw getting a big spin behind. Oh, sh wow. Six to go at the Glen. Wow. Wow, Goldback kept seventh. Despite the spin, Goldback kept the top ten. Well, he dropped a couple spots, but he kept the top ten despite spinning John McNamara. Here's the incident. Right there, Goldback contact with the 97 of John McNamara. He had nowhere to go when he got spun out. Oh my gosh, just, the, just when the chasers get in the top 10, they seem to wreck in the most strangest way. Yeah, it's just not been the, it's just not been the day for the, not been the start that the, these chasers wanted. With, with the bad start with their other competitors, that might not be so bad. Here's another incident with P.J. Williams. He got dumped by Jeffrey Buckeye on this corner. Then he comes back up and makes contact with hometown buddy Pichu. <laughs> A rude homecoming for the 99 and the 8. These TA2 drivers just hadn't had the best of luck in their own course. Oh boy. Oh well, it happens, but... And here's a third incident with Connor Vale, because I saw Vale he wrecked out, and oh, James Shelley got too high up and got stuck in the sand. Here's the incident with Connor Vale. Oh, Dylan Thoreau in the five machine spun him out, racing to the line. And yikes. That was just a dangerous move. Shelley had to come pit road after that little incident. Oh, man. Buckeye's gonna pit. Buckeye's gonna pit with just a few laps left. We're just gonna get back to green with four laps to go. We get a caution the next lap. The race is over and it'll be the rest of the way out in the caution flag. If we get to the white flag, somehow have a long green flag run and get to the white flag, even a caution will not end this race. So here we go, four laps to go. Could be the last green flag run of the race. Reeves to the stand to take the green flag before the go. Oh, 
Oh, the 22 is split. Is that the race? No, that's not the race. The 22 is just split out. On the corner, six contact with Brayton. And oh man, these top two competitors wrecked. That's the race right there. Joshua Michaels takes the lead. Wow, the top two drivers have wrecked out. And Joshua Michaels has taken the lead. Fellow chaser Jacob Cook now runs second. If Michaels though does not make it out to the caution, Cook could take the win away and possibly seal a deal for the chasers or something. But here we go, Joshua Michaels going to take the final corner and the lead under the caution flag. Oh my gosh. The last twist of the race potentially if these guys don't pit before the checkered flag. Man, was it a wreck. Abby Sachs was battling for the lead against Connor Breton and then things turned ugly as um, Breton gets stuck up with Sachs in the 24. All Sachs was trying to do was battle for the lead and he accidentally spun him out and almost flipped him. Breton just a... wow. And he's going to be very mad at the 24 for ruining a chance at position as look at this, Connor Vale and Zach Goldbeck make him flip and Jeffrey Baca who had just pitted earlier gets involved in it so his strategy goes out the window oh man and now from here on out it's gonna be determined by who survives to the line under caution because we have a couple drivers we have we would we usually have a couple drivers go to pit road before the finish line because they didn't make it on fuel. Chris Washer retired, but that's not our constant focus today. Our focus is if these guys make it out alive. Right now is the 16 pitting, not yet. So two to go under the caution flag. You never know though. It is official, Joshua Michaels is your leader. So they did make it official, if you were wondering. So two to go, they're not going to get back under green, which is strange because we have three to go and they never go back to green when the caution comes out at exactly three laps to go, even though these take two caution laps. I don't know why that is, but oh, it's always been like that. See, a couple drivers I think must have hit it, but not Michaels. One lap to go, he's got to make it with just one more lap to go. If Joshua Michaels wins this race, all three of the replacement drivers would have won this season. David Rochester won at Mexico City in the first race of World Tour 9. He replaced Ian Dutta. Seth Cole won in Madrid also during World Tour 9. He replaced Sean Chumra. And Joshua Michaels, who replaced Kyle Thomas just a couple turns away from his first career Pokemon Cup Series win. And what better way to get a win than at the Glen. So here comes the final turn. Will he have to pit? Let's see. Pit road is below. He looks like he might be on the line. No, he will not pit it off the final turn. Joshua Michaels wins the first chase race, the Diancy 300 at Walking Glen. Joshua Michaels gets his first career NASCAR Pokemon Cup Series win. And what a way to win at the wild and wacky Watkins Glen. It looked like Connor Green was going to win the race, but a wreck with just four to go over Abby Sachs denied him of the victory. So Michaels got the win and, and the 16 machine would have been Kyle Thomas's car, but Michaels does win it here. His first career poem on Cup Series win. Jacob Cook, the highest chaser, will have to settle for second. Bob Fergus, also a chaser in third. Dylan Thoreau, fourth. Casey Clover, the chaser, fifth. Amy Shelley, sixth. Nick Marney, seventh. Jason Trost, eighth. Jack Blake, ninth. Trost Blake are chasers. And Abby Sachs survives in tenth despite being in 
the driver that spun Breton out of the win and out of his own win. Okay, that was a weird live bubble there. But anyway, the rest of the field you already saw. That'll do it from here at the Glen. Let's make it official. And uh, that's it from the Glen. We'll see you in chase race number two. We'll show you the chase grid points only. For the rest of the non-chasers, we'll show the rest of the unedited points at, at the end of the season. So we'll show those points at the end of the championship race. But this will only apply to the chasers this season. And who in the bottom four needs to step it up in the next two races to avoid an elimination. So... Joshua Michaels, not a chaser, but a winner here today at Watkins Glen in the first chase race of the season. We'll see you next chase race as here comes the chase grid points. See you later. Before we go, though, I did a simulation of the Phoenix race of what might have been like if we actually did Phoenix instead of the Glen. And so here are the results what would have been Phoenix. I didn't show the entire race itself because I just did a simulation of highlights and stuff. And it would have been like, because uh, we already had done that first chase race in the Glen, even though it was at the wrong track. Um, so yeah, here's a simulation, and Amy Shelley ended up winning that simulation. Leia Walker would have finished in second. Nick Barney would have been third. Kyle Collins would have been the highest ch chaser in fourth. Joan Thoreau was fifth, and there's the rest of the top ten, if you were curious to know who finished where. And here's the rest of the field, what it could have been like. But I've decided to make this interesting. I am going to be adding up the points from this result and the Glen race itself. So this will technically be a double points weekend. And I will add the points up from the Phoenix race and the Watkins, the Phoenix simulation and the Watkins Glen race as well. I will be adding those points all together and will make it interesting. So. The win will count towards Amy Shelley's record. It's her first. It would be it would it would be her first win since um, the All Star Showdown with the Dead Heat. By the way, last season's All Star Showdown at Zombie Spaceport. Remember that. But anyway, um, Shel we have two winners technically this weekend. The real winner, Joshua Michaels, and the sim winner, Amy Shelley in Phoenix. So, well, hope you guys enjoyed either way. The points will be added from both Phoenix Sim and the Watkins Glen race, so it'll be double points pretty much, so it's it's going to make things interesting, I thought I'd make up for it, for my little mistake, I hope not to do it again, next race and chase will be in California, I just looked at the schedule and confirmed it is going to be in California, Auto Club Speedway next chase race for number two, and then it's the last one of the Sweet 16 will be held in Charlotte. So hope you'll stick around for that, and now we'll show you the Chase Grid points. So see you guys later.